Hi folks, HR Funk here. Recently I've been producing a series of videos on the Marine Corps' new M18 service pistol and I've been comparing it to those pistols in the Marine Corps' inventory that the M18 is going to be replacing. The video that went live yesterday compared the M18 to the M9 slash M9A1. And since that video went live, I've gotten responses from many of you that have questioned why the Beretta pistol is being replaced in the first place. Essentially, you're asking what's wrong with it, why did the military not consider an updated version of the Beretta pistol. And I wanted to put together this video today to try to answer to the best of my ability what I think the reasons are that the military is dumping the Beretta M9. And I don't have anyone who's an insider or a spy in the military who's feeding me information. But I was in the Marine Corps when the Beretta pistol was first adopted, and I remember some of the things that were discussed back then. And I've also heard and read many complaints over the years. And as I say that, I don't take any of these as being absolute gospel. In fact, as I've said before, I like the Beretta pistol. I think it's a good pistol. But there have been enough of these complaints that I have heard and read over and over again that I believe a lot of them may have contributed to the M9's demise. So in this video, I'm going to look at what I believe based on my research and what I've heard and seen over the years as to why the Beretta M9 is going to be phased out as the official service pistol of the United States military. The first factor that I'll talk about that I think has contributed to the rather unceremonious demise of the M9 service pistol is something that's probably more of a factor than anyone will ever admit to and that is the fact that there's a lot of lingering animosity about the fact that this pistol was ever chosen as our official military sidearm in the first place. Several years ago, as in maybe five years ago, I produced a video that was the 1911 versus the M9 and the title of the video was Did the Military Get It Right in 1985? And as old as that video is, I still routinely get comments coming in from viewers and a lot of those comments are from people that are just unhappy that this was ever chosen as our official military sidearm. And some of those people are unhappy that the Beretta pistol replaced the time-honored 1911. Some people are unhappy that along with replacing the 1911, it also heralded in the era of the U.S. military using the 9mm cartridge. Some people are unhappy because they see the selection or the adoption of the M9 as a capitulation to NATO. Some people don't like it because it's a foreign manufactured pistol, or at least it's manufactured by a foreign company, even though these pistols now largely are made here in the United States. Some people don't like it because it was not brand X or brand Y or model P or whatever of some other manufacturer. So all those things together just combine to form a large group of people who don't like this pistol <laughs> for various reasons. And I don't know how many people are still left in the military from the time that the Beretta was adopted, but anyone who is still in the military is going to be very high ranking, and if they found themselves in a position where they could help usher out the M9 and try to bring something new in, then I don't know that they would have hesitated to do so. So the first factor that I really think contributes is the fact that there's a lot of people out there, both in the military and now probably new generations of military members who heard their fathers and grandfathers and whoever discussed the M9 and talk about what they didn't like about it and how this brand or that brand should have been adopted or at very least this should never have been adopted and now they've found themselves in the military and they're still continuing to repeat that same mantra. So I think that really largely is going to be one of the first contributing factors to the demise of the Beretta M9. Number two, and these are really in no particular order, is the fact that the grip profile and the grip circumference of the Beretta pistol is just too big for the hands of some shooters. And this is something that Beretta has tried to mitigate over the years. I mentioned in my video that went live yesterday that on the M9A1 and the newer 92s, they reduced this radius back here to try to make this a little shorter trigger reach, especially for the double action trigger. But even so, there are some shooters who just can't easily reach that trigger and really can't manage the pistol at all with all of the controls, not just the trigger, but also the magazine release, the safety, the slide release, and what have you. So number two is going to be the fact that the pistol is too big for the hands of some shooters, and there's really no way to modify it sufficiently to make it small enough to accommodate those shooters. 
The next factor I'll discuss is the M9 safety decocker. Now I've already mentioned that for some shooters this is a difficult reach to actuate the safety. But the other issue that comes into play occurs during a tap rack and bang drill or just reloading the pistol. If the shooter is clearing a malfunction or reloading the pistol and cycles the slide with an overhand grip, it is possible to inadvertently engage the safety as I've done right here. If that happens, after clearing the malfunction or reloading the pistol, if the shooter immediately comes up intending to fire, the trigger is going to be disengaged. At that point, he or she is going to have to stop, look at the pistol, figure out why it's not shooting, determine that the safety has been applied, release the safety, and then come back up and shoot. Obviously, all that takes time, and that could be precious seconds in the middle of a firefight. I've never seen this as a huge issue myself, and this is another situation where Beretta attempted to mitigate that problem by adopting the G-Series safety on the newer M9A3. And for any of you that don't know, that safety automatically, once it's applied and the pistol is decocked, it springs the safety back up into the fire position so it cannot stay in the safe position. Regardless of that, I've seen that complaint and heard that complaint many times over the years, and I think that's another thing that contributed to the M9 being discontinued. The fourth factor I'll discuss is the double action, single action trigger mode that a shooter has to master with this pistol. I have heard police officers complain about this particular feature for years, and I can only imagine with the entire military, all the shooters out there who are going to have difficulty mastering that long, heavy double action pull, and then transitioning to the short, light, single action pull, and I am sure a lot of them will complain about that and they will also compare it to whatever privately owned handgun they own that has either a double action only system or a single action only system or what have you and they'll talk about how much easier it is to put accurate shots on target with that particular firearm whereas with the Beretta you always have to deal with that long heavy double action pull and then the trigger transition. Now I will say this is not an insurmountable problem with regard to the pistol. It's simply a training issue. I have carried pistols like this. You can become very proficient at managing that long heavy pull and transitioning to the shorter lighter pull. Even so, I think that's probably a big factor that a lot of people didn't like, or I should say a big feature that a lot of people didn't like about the Beretta pistols. And I'm reasonably certain that led to the demise of these pistols. But also something that is probably worth mentioning here is with the transition to another type of firearm that has that short light double action only system that a lot of the polymer pistols have today or even a single action only pistol is you are giving up a margin of safety under stress when that long heavy double action trigger goes away and in a situation that's stressful like close quarter battle that's going to be a situation where you might really want that extra little bit of trigger weight to slow you down if something startles you because one of the biggest oxymorons out there is the term friendly fire and if you fired at a friend there's nothing friendly about it. That being said I really think that double action single action trigger mechanism is another large contributing factor to the fact that the Beretta pistol is being phased out of service. Another issue that's come about over the years that I think has helped lead to the discontinuation of the Beretta pistols is a lack of confidence on the part of the troops this pistol is issued to. And there are a lot of things that contribute to this, one of which goes back all the way to the earliest days shortly after this pistol was adopted. And that was an incident where a shooter was firing the pistol and the slide failed. In fact, it fractured and a piece of the slide flew back and hit the shooter in the face, causing an injury. Now, to the best of my knowledge, that was a unique incident. It was a U.S. Navy SEAL who was firing the pistol when that happened. He did sustain an injury, but Beretta, in the aftermath of that, modified the design of the pistol to keep it from happening again, and I think that design modification was retrofit into the pistols that already were in existence at the time. Even so, there are people out there who believe the slides were failing repeatedly and constantly and that pieces were flying off the pistol like confetti every time it was fired. And trying to dial that back after all the discussions in barracks and bars and around bivouac sites and whatever 
and convince anyone that that only happened one time <laughs> is very difficult to do. Another thing that has helped to reduce the confidence of the troops in this pistol are the malfunctions that are reported to occur with it. Now largely I think this is due to a couple of things. One of which is some maintenance issues with the pistol where they just did not have proper care taken of them over the years. If you have a pistol, regardless of how reliable the design may be, that has a magazine spring that's beyond its service life, a worn out recoil spring, an extractor spring that's not working properly, any of those things can lead to malfunctions in the pistol no matter how reliable the design itself might be. And I think that is something that a lot of shooters didn't recognize. All they knew is the pistol they were given, the Beretta pistol that they were given, didn't work. They would have experienced similar failures with any other pistol in that type of a condition, but in their mind it's the Beretta pistol and that's what's not working properly. Lastly, there was the issue that it was experienced in the sandy environments when the pistol started to malfunction, and that, as I understand it, was a result of third-party magazines that were acquired by the military. They were probably less expensive, I wouldn't be surprised. And those magazines, when they were combined with sand, caused malfunctions. They did not occur with the Beretta magazines, and Beretta, to their credit, also modified their magazines, even though there wasn't a problem with them to begin with, to make them even less apt to malfunction if sand got inside of them. They came out with their so-called sandproof magazines. So even though there are explanations for all of those, the only thing the troops know is the pistols that they were trying to use didn't work. And once confidence in a firearm is lost by members of the military or any armed professional for that matter, trying to restore it is very, very difficult. There are still people who were in the military during the Vietnam War who will not own an AR-15. In their mind, that is an unreliable firearm, it doesn't function reliably, and they absolutely will not own one. Trying to explain what happened with those early M16s and how it has been fixed over the years and those issues don't exist anymore and the current AR-15 is a very, very reliable firearm is something you will never convince them of. Similarly, I think with the M9 pistol, if anyone has used it, and in their mind it's just not a reliable pistol, trying to convince them that it is, is going to be a losing battle. And to a degree I understand that. If you're fighting a battle and your government has given you a weapon to fight that battle with, and it doesn't work, and you end up being injured, or you lose friends, or you lose people in your command, all you know is that weapon didn't work. And again, trying to convince someone who's experienced that, that it was not the weapon itself, that there were other factors that were involved, is probably going to be very, very difficult. So again, I think lack of confidence is another reason that the Beretta pistols are being discontinued. Size and weight is the next thing I'll discuss. Now, when I look at the M9, I don't think that it's particularly big and heavy. At the same time, when we compare it to some of the 9mm pistols that are being manufactured today, it's probably difficult to look at this and not think maybe you could get something a little more compact and a little bit lighter for your troops to carry. So this is something that's highly subjective and it's something that's very personal as far as your tolerance to size and weight and such. But if you're already carrying a lot of gear and you add to it a pistol that's on the top side of two pounds, Probably trying to reduce that a little bit and go with something a little bit more compact and a little bit lighter might seem like something you want to do. So I think size and weight is another contributing factor to the demise of the M9. Next is the fact that with the M9 and the M9A1, there is no means to add an optic. And as we move forward and optics become more common on all firearms to include handguns, I think we're going to see pistols like this that don't have any capacity for adding an optic sight fade into obsolescence. So definitely with the modular handguns as they were being assessed and as submissions were going to the military, they were being looked at with the idea that an optic would be something that would be added to the design. So the fact that the Beretta pistols didn't accommodate that is something else that led to their passing by the wayside. Ease of maintenance was probably also a contributing factor, and when we look at the newer polymer frame striker fire pistols, they are very simple and easy to maintain. Compared to something like the Beretta M9, they're going to be easier, they're going to be cheaper to maintain, 
And I think probably that ease of maintenance is another thing that contributed to the M9 being discontinued. I think cost is another consideration that came into play. Again, when we think about the current generation of polymer frame striker fired pistols, the entire lower half of the pistol is essentially made in a mold and the parts that go inside of that frame, a lot of them are stamped parts. They are very cheap and easy to manufacture. Machining is kept to a minimum and usually it's just the slide and barrel that are actually machined. And when we compare that to a pistol like the M9, it's just going to be a lot less expensive to purchase those polymer frame striker fire pistols in the first place as opposed to continuing to purchase a pistol like this. The last factor that I'll talk about is just the desire on the part of people in the military for something new. When we look at the M9, it has design elements that go back at least to the 1930s. And for people in the military today, they probably look at this and feel like they're carrying an antique. And when we combine that with people who are in the military in their 20s and 30s, and they know that they're carrying the same pistol that their fathers or mothers carried a couple of decades ago, they've got to be thinking that there must be something new on the market today that's going to perform better for them than this pistol that in their mind is antiquated. So I think when we combine all of those things, and I think probably all of the factors that I just talked about exist in different factions of the military to different degrees, but they all combined to form a culture where this was just something that they did not want to continue working with, to the point that even when Beretta offered for consideration the M9A3, no one in the military was really even interested in looking at it. So all of that, again, combined to lead to the modular handgun system and the ultimate adoption of the M17 and M18. And that's the video for today. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, warbirdbunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. I'm wearing one of Nathan's t-shirts here. You can get this t-shirt or my t-shirt or any of his other firearms or patriotic themed gear if you go to warbirdbunker.com and be sure to use my discount code, which is HRFUNK for you and you'll get 10% off that purchase. So see you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.